Okay. Let's stand for the pledge. Dr. Mullen, if you could lead us in the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's say a moment of silence for our police men and women. Thank you. Walter. I'll do this Cindy Davis, please. Ready to start? 15 Park Lane West in Milford. Um, so I've got a lot of things to talk about. To begin, Board of Ed cuts. Loss of 1.4 million, Town Council cut 800,000, Mayor cut 600,000. What comes to mind for me is the hire of Reardon was 70,000 because I think he gave 55,000 and then there was the benefits. I don't know an exact figure, it was never posted. <coughs> um, the economic developer, one, up to 150 with, with benefits, is it, no, that's going to come out to, if I was like 250 approximately. Um, I don't, so I'll, re, I'll try to go really fast. Those two salaries and ratio to, the, to students in New Milford, I don't think it's an equitable ratio. Um, one meeting, I think it was February 26, there was a $1.5 million surplus that was stated. I want to know where it is, how is it being used. I think, okay. Uh, next thing that's really important to me, a misrepresentation of governance. So, when you guys came in, you didn't, you didn't want people to be on multiple boards. I was one of them. Currently, you now have the following people on the following boards. Three people on these boards. That's, I don't, okay. Libra Furman is on Riverfront Charter Revision Brownfield. Paul, Paul Scamassi, who's a town council member. He's on the Faculty Utilization Subcommittee. He's on the Charter Revision Committee. Joseph DiGregorio, Charter Revision, Committee Center. I'm, I'm trying to go really fast. Town Facility Utilization. Nick Poder, I'm saying the name correctly. Community Center, Town Facilities, Farm Preservation. Frank Wargo, Riverfront, Community Center, Brownfield. Julian Bailey, Riverfront, Brownfield. Okay. Where is that fair? Where is that equitable? Um, um, and ne the next... Oh, actually, I think they put it down further. I'm thinking here. I think I forgot my other page. Um, okay, it's further down. Okay, I want to understand how municipal government works. I came. To, I went to see Attorney Grimes to understand the charter. Um, I I questioned the hiring or the firing of the two of the. Deputy Chief uh, Eleanor, um, I had, there was a ruling, I read it. Nowhere do I see in any of that information how it de defines uh, firing versus the, the position not being available. So, coming from a place of solution, I would like Attorney Grimes to be able to have a monthly seminar that would, I, would, that would teach me and maybe others how the charter works. Not only the charter, but the state statute. And this could be in, 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 in conjunction with the charter revision. There's many things that are going on right now that I, I didn't put my name in for the charter revision, but I think there's things that need to be clarified. So I would like to be a part of the process and, and understand what's going on. And I hope that that can be put forth because I think it would help a lot of people. Um, now, questioning a potential employee. Okay. One of the comments that you made, Attorney Bess, was that somebody, that the hires integrity, that Reardon questioned, that, 
They were questioning Reardon's integrity. I want to go back and I want to state that it wasn't the integrity, but it was her ability to do her job. It was her ability to have the skills, the education, and the performance capability. It wasn't, it wasn't about integrity. Um, however, Cindy, you have one more That's minute, fine. Please. Okay, great. Thank I you. have more to say. Maybe I'll come, can I come back and do more? Um, I have witnessed conduct amongst town council members that has been um, disparaging. You're smiling. Um, that's, that's not acceptable. Council members can't make comments about other, other people. They can't make comments and they shouldn't be emotional. And that has happened more than once. Um, also, the, the petty, so this is really important. You have more, you've made two or three new committees, and on those committees, I think it ranges from seven to 12 people. The people, the people that I just read the names of, many of them are on the Pettibone Committee. I am asking for a reconfiguration of the appointees so that the number and the Pettibone is aligned to the number of appointees of the new ones that you've put on. Because having 25 people on a committee is not going to work. I refer to it as Tower of Babel. Send me your the minute, please. It would, be a t it would take Solomon, it would take the wisdom of Solomon to be able to get everybody to, to, to work together. So, um, one more, uh, can I come back and do this? To, to share yes. my information? Goodbye. Thank you. Joe? Good evening. Joe Coranta, Tree Warden for the town of New Milford. I have some stuff that I'd like to pass out to you guys. These are some photographs that you'll have to share because my printer does not have a lot of ink left in it. I apologize. Um, <coughs> if you would just kind of share, they're really the same. And these are copies of our tree. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is recently there's been some discussion about the tree program's performance as it relates to marking trees. Apparently there was um, some mention last week that uh, I believe Mr. Councilman Esposito brought up that uh, maybe we hadn't been marking trees and I wanted to get that cleared up. And if you refer to that list, I apologize for the print being small. You'll notice a little line on there, okay? And from that line down, there are 52 trees, not including trees that were marked this week, that have been marked by me um, and slated for removal, okay? So we've been doing our due diligence marking trees up until a meeting that we had in December, okay, I believe it was December 27th to be exact, and myself, the mayor, Mike Zarba, Mike Boucher were present at that meeting, and a group decision was made because we do not have a contractor lined up to remove tagged mark trees, that we weren't going to go out and continue to mark trees. Uh, for the simple fact, and I think you'll remember our uh, former tree warden acknowledging the fact that we don't want to mark trees and have them sitting on the side of the road marked for months and months on end. Okay? So we were taking our trees on a per case basis. A resident would call in. We would look at those trees specifically, determine whether or not they needed to be removed. Okay? and we would deal with them. We've had several instances um, that we've successfully completed. Councilman Gold has a piece of property between the town hall pro uh, parking lot and, and a piece of property that he owns, so there's a perfect example, Mr. Gold. I think you'll, um, you know, um, remember that, okay? So, um, more importantly, um, if you look at that list, okay, out of the 53 trees that I have marked, there are a vast majority of them that have not been cut down, okay? And 
That is out of my control. The list has trees that have been marked in October, October 21st to be exact. And they are still currently standing in inventory uh, as a liability on the side of our roads. And I find that um, discouraging at the least. So um, I have some solutions for that. Uh, I think it's going to take a little bit longer than my allotted few minutes here. So maybe I could speak at the end of public comments and we can let everybody else kind of get a shot at this. But um, um, I'd like to speak to you about that. I don't know if we have time tonight um, to talk about trees outside of public comments or if that's even on the agenda, but if it is, we can do it then. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chris? Chris Cosgrove, 143 Sunny Valley Road. Um, I'd like to talk tonight a little bit about the budget and the process that I've uh, seen so far. Um, and I've got to say there's, uh, you know, a couple aspects of the budget that I'm not, you know, very happy with. Uh, an almost 4% uh, budget increase um, for a state where Connecticut, we're already the second highest tax state uh, in the country. Um, and uh, all the while, we're, the state's still bleeding red ink while we're at those high taxes. And I think high taxes will draw down our economy, potentially could draw down our economy more. And I'm also not thrilled about using some of our landfill settlement reserves to cover operating costs, which means we're not entirely living uh, within our means. But I'm sure without a doubt, you're going to get a lot of other complaints about the budget. People are going to complain about cuts, positions uh, eliminated, people hired. Um, and when I sit back and I look at the big picture, there's probably not a single constituency in the town that's going to be entirely happy with this budget. And that tells me you've probably done a pretty good job at balancing, uh, balancing the needs versus wants and with what we have. And when I also look at the big picture, I know we lost $2.4 million in revenue targeted just for education funding and $3 million in total from the state uh, that the town lost between the town and our education funding, $3 million. It seems clear to me that the governor of the state targeted education more than anything in its cuts. Um, and after listening to a lot of uh, several budget presentations uh, during this cycle, I also learned we have a lot of unfunded mandates uh, that we deal with on the education side, on the town side, uh, from Hartford. And those are things that comes directly out of taxpayers' pockets year after year after year. Um, this time, they didn't give a mandate, they just took the funding away. So, and, and I think uh, if you were to have uh, went along with the, the Board of Education's requested budget increase, we would have had over a 10% um, tax increase, which to me would have been totally unacceptable. Um, and, and yet, with all those, uh, the revenue cuts, you were able to keep the funding level year over year. And on the bright side, you've included road and infrastructure improvements, which have been put off for far too long, which we really need. Um, you helped increase uh, the size of our police force uh, while controlling costs there. Um, I think that these things will make the town run more efficiently and uh, be more attractive. Uh, and you've done that while keeping the town budget flat. All in all, I think you all had a tremendously tough task uh, put at your feet this year. It, but you chose, I think, to meet it head on uh, and deal with it in a responsible fashion. Um, I think using more of our reserves uh, to cover costs, uh, as, as a lot of people I think were um, requesting you to do, uh, would have been irresponsible. Um, and it would just kick the can down the road even further, and it wouldn't have solved any of the problems uh, that we have. I think putting our fiscal house in order is key to making our town attractive to new, starting new businesses and attracting businesses. 
Um, and I think your budget this year is a major step in the right direction. Um, and I appreciate your time, your thoughtfulness uh, in this process, the visibility you provided the community by posting uh, presentations uh, so we could study it uh, at our leisure and your willingness to make some difficult decisions uh, this year. So, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Jeff. Jeff McBride, 288 Kent Road. Uh, the charter was alluded to uh, just before uh, I stepped up here, and I have uh, talked to several people that are on that board that's going to revise that charter uh, for the town of New Milford. And uh, they're going to work very diligently to try to make this uh, charter revisions and updates uh, more to the liking and the use of, of everybody in town. It'd be clarified a lot more and more understandable. So I trust that they'll be able to do the job. And uh, as of late, the tough decisions that uh, town councils had to make, and especially the mayor and some of the things that, that uh, he had to do uh, as part of the job. Okay, I don't think the mayor overstepped his boundaries when he uh, laid off a couple of employees for the town of New Milford, and I applaud you for that. That's a tough decision to have to make, and I wouldn't want to be in your position and have to do that. So uh, I feel that uh, in the future, when everybody is uh, made aware of all the changes of the town charter, that it will be uh, something that uh, will be very understandable and pretty much self-explanatory throughout. So I, I leave my trust in the people that are on that board to be able to do that job. As far as the budget, the town has had a, a, a agreed to a flat budget, no increase, which uh, again is very tough. Have to work a lot of numbers and make a lot of changes to make this work. But uh, I applaud you again for uh, um, being able to come up with a flat budget for the town. I feel in my heart that the Board of Education needs to follow <coughs> suit. If they don't, then it's going to make it that much more difficult for the taxpayer. Okay, and uh, I don't mind paying 27.25 per thousand dollars on my taxes. But then after that, to add another 3.87% on top, top of that, that makes it very difficult. So tonight, uh, I'm asking you folks, when you do finally put everything to the Board of Finance, that I ask you to charge the Board of Finance to reach into their heart and think about everything and have them agree to do a flat budget for the Board of Education. I'm not against education because I know that the future of our town and the future uh, uh, of everything is in the children, okay? They are our future. But this is a very difficult and a very unusual year. And then I would also like to ask someone on the town council if they would check <coughs> into the state and find out where all the lotto money goes, the interest gain on that, because that lotto, Connecticut lotto, was created <coughs> to offset education. So why does it not ever get used for that? Why does it go to the general fund and get squandered every year? That's a, that's a massive waste because there's millions and millions of dollars in there and there would be no reason for the town board of education to have a flat budget and be able to draw from that to offset what they're looking for. But the state is just not giving it and that's not right and I think somebody should step up to the plate and find out why they're not doing their job and doing their part. Uh, last, uh, our tree warden. Uh, on the budget that Paul presented, it had a negative that's eliminating that job. Uh, I feel that will be a great injustice to the town if that happens, okay? And a few line items down on that uh, budget that Paul had, there was one item for $29,000 plus for some health insurance. I don't know, Paul, if it was for one people or several, but I was with the understanding it was one per for one person. Jeff, you have one minute, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you. If we have one person having insurance coverage for $29,000, that's astronomical. And I feel if you're still going to cover that person for that kind of money, you can subtract $7,500 from that, and they'll still have good health insurance, and we'll still have a tree warden. 
So I'm asking you to give that some very serious thought. Tree Warden is essential. Joe is doing a marvelous job. He's volunteering a lot of his own time free to make this job happen. So I think that all of this needs to be taken very seriously. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff. That's the end of the list, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Cindy, do you have something? Well, that was a great, thank you. I appreciate that about the water and the money. Um, so, Board of Ed, the issue right now is that eight positions are being cut. Um, and I need, I just needed to say that. Um, two other things. So, in response to the letter that was in the, the letter to the editor and somebody making up numbers, my response, my proposal is to get real information would mean to get it from the public. So, an online survey, maybe, to ask the town people what they, how they feel about the Budget Board of Ed, um, so on and so forth. I mean, you make decisions, but don't you want to hear from the townspeople? So if you did an online survey, if you put ballot, if you put um, boxes into municipal places, they would be able to answer the question, too. It's a suggestion. Um, one more thing, which I don't know where it is right now. Um, Mr. Simansi, I would like you to be paying attention to me right now. I, I, I know one time you, I had to address that. I think it's not acceptable that you don't listen to what people are saying and listen, listen to them. Um, the, where is it going? I know I'm taking up my time. Oh, I know. So when the figures were presented at the board meeting and two people weren't here and I thought it would be very valuable for all board members to be here to make the vote. And, and the issue of, of board members that are town council members that are absent, I mean, it's, it seems to me that there's, Mr. Sumanza, you're, it really, I, I've seen you absent more than I've seen you present. And it was really amazing to me when, when, when to go back to leadership, Ms. Mayor Bass, you are, it was my belief that I would see you have leadership when the, when the budget cuts were going on, but it was Mr. Szymanski. And Mr. Szymanski is not even here half the time, so I'm a little confused by that. I mean, I think if all board members were saying something when the cuts were going on, I would understand that too. But I didn't understand why one person who's not even the mayor was making those cuts. It's supposed to be joint. So I, I'm, I, I think it's really important that town people, the t town council members, are respectful. I just watched when Mr. Samansi wasn't paying any attention to when Jeff was speaking. I, I find that just really difficult. Your job is to listen to us. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Joe? Joe? Okay, so where we left off was <clears throat> we're marking trees, not all of them are getting cut, right? Okay. Um, some good stuff that came out of the storms. So we've had some big storms. The first storm was a doozy. It knocked down a bunch of trees. It was, I think we had 40 or 50 down trees on wires. It was chaos. Um, figured out we didn't have a plan. Brought it to Mayor Bass the next day. Emergency meeting, he afforded me some of his time. Was um, very receptive to the idea and autom uh, immediately implemented an emergency management plan specifically on dealing with trees on wires and closed roads. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate that. Um, moving forward, I don't know if any of you have seen this list that's been floating around for road closures that we have now. It's all part of Web EOC um, having to do uh, specifically with emergency management. We have a um, uh, five emergency thresholds. So anything over five trees on wires or roads closed or uh, so on and so forth, we, uh, we enact that emergency management center. Uh, Brian Oman is our emergency management director. He's uh, going to head that. And so that'll give us the opportunity to um, uh, inventory and prioritize our emergencies and deal with them accordingly. Um, 
So that's a good thing. That's a, that's a, a, a real step in the right direction. Um, we have to come to terms with the old topic of from the time we mark the trees to the time they get cut. And in my opinion, um, the solution for that would be ex the exact opposite of what Mr. Szymanski proposed the other night by removing the tree warden position, okay, and giving it to DPW. I, I would, in fact, do the opposite. Um, if you read the Connecticut General Statues that I passed out, they're pretty clear. I mean, they're. I mean, I just don't think they could be any clearer, and I don't think we should deviate. It clearly states that the tree warden, okay, if you want to follow along, um, has the care and control of all the trees and shrubs in the right of way, okay. But then it also goes as far as saying that the tree warden should be soliciting, hiring, signing off on. Uh, the removal and the care of those trees. We don't do that in the town of New Milford. In New Milford, unlike any other town, um, the tree warden marks them. And then after that, it's in the hands of D DPW. It's in their budget. Uh, they write the bid. They facilitate all that. And in order for that to work, we have to go through an exorbitant amount of steps until that tree is cut down. And it, there's a disconnect. Communication, we'll call it, okay? And I think it's something that we can get away from. It's simple. I go out, myself or my assistant marks five trees. <coughs> Mr. Emmons is one of our vendors. We call Mr. Emmons. Mr. Emmons, do you have a day next week you can take care of some trees for us? Yes. We, he comes out, he cuts the trees. And instead of waiting for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, Four months, we effectively take care of tree problems within 10 days. So, so that's what I ask of this commission. And it's not something that we're going to figure out tonight, obviously. But give this some thought. And maybe one of you want to bring this up in the meeting um, on the agenda. But let's talk about maybe taking that $150,000 line item and making a budget. Or making a line item for tree removal operations as it pertains to the tree warden. Whether it be me or anyone else, Joe, you have a minute, please. If 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 we're going to insist that the care and control of the trees and the responsibility falls on the tree warden, whoever that may be, I just think that we empower him to do so from start to finish, and I think that'll alleviate a lot of our problems. Thank you. Thank you. Is that it, Walter? Yes. Anybody else? Is that, uh, uh, Thank Mr. you. Mayor, that's the end, yes. Thank you, sir. Before I do Excuse mayor's me. remarks. I was, I was actually waiting. I was a few minutes late. You didn't get to sign up on the comment. Would it be possible for me to do that? Certainly. Thank yes, ma'am. My name is Jennifer Cizzoli. I'm a kindergarten teacher at North Bell Elementary can, School. Can you state your address, ma'am, for the record? Um, actually, I... I was at Willow Springs, and I actually moved just recently, but we still have a residence at Willow Springs. Um, and what I am here tonight about is, of course, the Board of Ed budget, and I know that you guys have a, a great deal of concerns, and as a teacher in the district, I also had a concern, not because I think I'm not going to say anything bad about it, but what I am going to say is I ask you or I implore you to please Think about not only just the teachers, but think about some of the things that are the other ways that you can impact that budget rather than through the teachers. I know that there's been lots of talk about health care increases, salary increases, etc. Um, as a teacher in the district, I can tell you that some of that is not accurate. Um, and I would ask you to perhaps connect to the teachers and ask them where they think some changes could be made, because I know that is not something that is often done. I would ask you to consider the fact that lower level positions that are on the possibility of being cut, to reconsider cutting those, because what we're seeing in the classroom is very different than what it looks like on paper. 
Um, for instance, there's collaborative classrooms of special ed students and regular ed students that have not had the support that they were supposed to have as a collaborative room. For instance, if a room is two thirds regular ed and one third special ed, there needs to be someone in there not just a regular ed teacher, and there is a teacher that I know of off the top of my head that has had no support and just received it in March. As a town, we look for the growth of our students. Um, we look to make educational gains everywhere in the district and become comparable to other districts in terms of those gains. However, the cuts that are being looked at will limit that. And when you look at a teacher budget and you look at the amount of teachers and there are people that compare that to the number of students and divide, that's not how it works. Um, there's lots of teachers within that budget. For instance, there's special areas, there's special education teachers, et cetera, that are not included in a classroom size. So while it may look like an 11 to one ratio, it's not. Last year I had 22 students in my kindergarten class, nine of which were four when they started. And what happens is you don't have support necessarily for those kids that need it. And if you pull from special areas or pull from an art class or a music, those kids lose. If you pull a teacher and put them into a class with 25 kids, they lose. And your educational standards for those kids go down. So I'm asking you, is that fair to them? I get we want to keep it as a taxpayer, the flat rate. I get it. I would want it. I don't want an increase. I don't want it to pay more in taxes. However, cutting from a teacher or cutting from programs that are necessity to those kids are not the areas to cut them. And if you're not sure or you haven't stepped into a school, I know all the kindergarten teachers at Northville would be happy to have you come in and watch what we do. We'd be happy to have you come in and see what we have on a daily basis, to see some of the behaviors that aren't addressed because nobody knows about them, to see some of the things and to reach all those kids that we need to reach on a regular basis. And I'm, I get teary because I'm passionate about what it is that I'm talking about and I feel ridiculous. However, it is the truth. And to cut from that is wrong. There are areas I'm sure that you can tighten a belt and fix and get what you need. But that is not, those are not the areas that you can do it. Pulling uh, a teacher or a para, thank you, thank you, is not the area that you can pull it from. Pulling from educational things like art and music and PE, which for some of these kids is the only time that they fit in with what's going on in our country, is not where you pull it from. So all I ask you is to talk to the teachers to talk to somebody that is there on the front lines before you make your decisions. And please, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Walter. Um, next, we're gonna go to mayor's remarks. So starting off first, we had our initial uh, meeting for charter revision. The uh, committee met, and the first initial public hearing will be Wednesday, the 14th of March, at 7 p.m., and it will be at 25 Church Street, right across the street. Yeah. Um, next, concerning the nor'easters that we've had. We've had two. We may have another one coming tonight. Um, Joe had already spoken a little bit about what we've done so far. Uh, we set up an emergency, an emergency management plan uh, that kicks into effect when we have certain thresholds, one of them being trees on, on power lines. Also, uh, we've communicated with our community care team that we set up, which when it meets a threshold, we then open up uh, not only the shelter at night, which is every night, but then also we, we, it would either be Lowe's and Fishers or the library so that those patrons can stay warm throughout the day till the next shelter comes. Um, also been in touch with Eversource. They still have crews that are here. They have crews, depending on their figuring, the east is gonna get hit more than here we have in the west, but they're still staging equipment for when and if we do have continual power, power outages. 
Um, they're pretty much caught up with the homes from the last storm. There may be a few that are out still. They're what they call one-offs. There may be the, the line got ripped off the actual house or whatnot. But they're <laughs> continually working on that to make sure that every home has electricity. Next, I'd like to thank the Historical Society. Um, they always do a great job. They're the keepers of our history. They did the 100th anniversary for Chief Warmog. That's the paper mache wood horse that used to uh, be outside over here on the porch over on Railroad Street for many, many years. So for those of us that have been around long enough, that horse, especially to my wife, had a very <laughs> big significance in her life. So I thank the Historical Society for that. Um, next, moving on to the trees, as uh, our tree warden talked about. I'd just like to touch upon that for a few moments. So uh, when I came into office, uh, it was a very big contentious issue, the trees, and what was going on with the trees. And the first thing that happened was we moved from a local bid process that was broken to a state process. So interestingly enough, we moved to the state process and lo and behold, I believe it's 14 trees, cost this town $25,000. So you know what I did? No, we're not doing that anymore. We're gonna stop and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do two things. First, if there's a tree that's an emergency, we are going to 100% get that tree down. We're gonna take care of that. But no way am I going to sign off on a bid that costs that town, this town, the town we love, 25 grand. That's not happening. So I met with all the partners. That would be tree warden, that would be assistant tree warden, that would be part, the public, part of, of the public works, all the stakeholders, to come up with a correct bid process. We tried initially, it didn't work too well. We're continuing to move forward and make sure by the end of the week, we are going to have a true bid that can go out to our local vendors to make it A, worth their while, B, it's to the taxpayer's advantage, and C, it's something we can keep track of. I spoke with, with Public Works Director Mike Zarba today. We have a management system called, called Carol Cartograph, I think is the name of it. I'm probably mispronouncing it. And that's gonna be able for us to track the trees. When they come down or need to be marked, they're gonna be entered in that system. We're gonna be able to see it and monitor it and take care of it. This will be on the next Town Council agenda where I can update you, let you know, let you know the bid went out and how we're moving forward. But the reason why I wanted to tell the council that we haven't chopped these trees down is because we're not gonna spend an abhorrent amount of money on these trees. Next, uh, I wanna talk a little bit about the town and our Board of Education partners, which we've been meeting pretty much, uh, Chairman Lawson could say, probably every 10 days. As we all know, we're trying to still come up with the $700,000 that we need to come up with to cover this year's reduction in state aid. So we've been meeting, talking about everything, how we can close that gap, and I will continue to do so as we move forward in this municipal year. Also, we're looking at the internal service fund. We've been using it for many, many years and as of right now, as uh, Mr. Asipov has told us during budget, that right now he's showing that that cannot be used towards tax relief. We are meeting with Lockton, which is our insurance um, consultant, again, in the middle of the month, and we're gonna be revisiting that as well so that we can see, does this plan benefit New Milford, benefit its, its plan, the plan both for the Board of Ed and for the town? So we'll be talking to you again about that towards the end of the month, but I just wanted to reassure the council that we are working together with our Board of Ed partners on the 700,000 and also the internal service fund. Um, the next one is on Thursday, this Thursday, 7 p.m. at John Pettibone, we're having our first community center subcommittee. 
So for those of the public that would like to attend, we'd love for you to, to come see the building and see the subcommittee and how we begin the process. And lastly, on, make sure I got the right date here, 7 p.m. On Thursday, March 29th at 7 p.m. at the E. Paul Martin Room, I'm going to give a state of the town address to the public. So if those could come, that would be great. We're also going to film it so it could be on YouTube. So that'd be March 29th, 7 p.m. here at the E. Paul Martin Room. <coughs> Thank you. Next approval of prior minutes. So moved. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Thank you. Next is the discussion and possible action regarding the appointment of a sergeant at arms. So this was brought up actually by Ms. Davis um, towards our uh, Robert's Rules of Order and uh, thought it was a good idea to have a sergeant at arms. Um, if we do decide, the council decides to do that, uh, Mr. Skelly has uh, said that he would be a sergeant at arms. So is there a motion to appoint a sergeant of arms? I make a motion to appoint Dr. Skelly as sergeant of arms in the Rutherford County Council. Second. Any discussion? What, is it, what did they actually do? So that basically they would keep order uh, within the council itself. So if there was um, a misappropriate behavior, they could uh, ask that person or esc escort that person out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Next. Uh, discussion and uh, regarding the reappointment of Dr. James, I'm sorry if I mispronounced, Scrimgeour? Scrimger. Scrimger as the Honorary Town of New Milford Poet Laureate. It's a two-year honorary position. will run from March 29th, 2018 through <coughs> March 29th of 2020. Second. Sorry. Any discussion? I spoke with uh, Dr. James. He's very excited about continuing on. He's done a great job. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Okay. Um, discussion um, and action regarding rescinding the motion uh, from last meeting to authorize the mayor to sign a certified resolution to apply pursuant to Connecticut General Statute Section 32-763 for financial assistance in the amount of $200,000 for developing the comprehensive plan for a redevelopment of multiple brownfields. It's called the Brownfield Area Wide Revitalization or BAR planning grant um, to the Connecticut Department of Economic and Community Development. Uh, the town of Milford respectfully requests that the Brownfield BAR planning grant in the amount of $200,000 for preparation of a New Milford Riverfront Revitalization Master Plan uh, the reason be rescinded, uh, the motion of February the 26th uh, did inadvertently not include an attachment when it was presented to the town council. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, uh, now we'd like to move that we certify a resolution of the town in Milford as prevent, presented in attachment 7B. Everybody have their attachment 7B? Yes, that's 7B. Attached to the minutes. Attached to the minutes. Oh, 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 tricky. Sorry. Tricky. Oh. <laughs> Tell me you have yes. one. 7B. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> To be or not to be. <laughs> I'm sorry. No apologies. Just shows who's reading the minutes. I got it from the minutes. Okay, Mike. Does everybody have it? Does everybody have it? So, Katie, you just you, you moved it. Is that, is that like that so far? I just moved this? I moved that we rescind that was right. voted on, and now I have moved that we 
uh, take the certified resolution as presented in 7B. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank okay. you. So I move uh, that we establish uh, a steering committee for the Brownfield area-wide revitalization planning grant program. The steering committee would consist of seven members for a duration of six months, beginning March 12, 2018, ending September 10, 2018. Uh, the Department of, uh, let me go back and tell you exactly what that stands for. The Department of Economic and Community Development recognizes the importance of having established partnerships and the success of the BAR planning program. Therefore, the Department of Economic and Community Development expects all applicants to have formed the advisory slash steering committee prior to submitting an application. Five points will be automatically awarded to all applicants that can demonstrate the presence of an advisory slash steering committee. The BAR Planning Grant Program Steering Committee that we would have appointments are from March 12, 2018 through September 10, 2018, the following people, Liba H. Furman, Julianne K. Bailey, Christopher P. Gardner, Peter Schmidt, Lucy Wildrick, Richard V. Roselio, and Frank Wargo. Second. Any discussion? Kathy's here. Kathy, can you come up? Dr. Moore? <clears throat> Maybe it's my odd sense of humor, but five points will be automatically awarded to Gryffindor for all applicants that can demonstrate. I mean, what, 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 what do five points mean? I mean, does something happen at graduation? Be, it could be $200,000 that we don't get if we don't do this. So or literally, by having this committee, counts. It does. it's the difference between getting the grant and not getting the grant. It's just basically, it's the Riverport Revitalization Committee, and we just also have appointed it them as a steering committee as well. And we get five points. Do we get a gold star too? <laughs> Whatever they want. Come on. I mean, it just sounds so silly. It, yeah. I mean, I just... how, how else do we get points? <laughs> <laughs> if we deliver brownies to them, will we get five more points? I mean, I mean no, you either I'm do just... it or you don't do it. What, what are the rules? You mean the state of Connecticut just thinks it's silly? Google yeah, that's, that's <laughs> all right. It shouldn't surprise me. I'm sorry, I just... <laughs> I, 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 I'm I agree. Sorry. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Thank you. Excuse Thank you, Kathy. Uh, complete streets. Um, anybody have any questions on that? We're still getting some more information. Are we going at it? No. Oh. Okay. And just... For the, just to reinforce for those in our public area that there is, uh, we have until the 12th of April to act upon this. Yeah, my only, I mean, as a comment, my only concern is to put undue burden on any kind of, any developing or development going on, because as we know, it's not going on a lot. I, mean, I know it's 2%, doesn't seem like a lot, but if it's a big project, it's could be a lot. So that, that's just my concern. I guess we're not voting on it tonight. I just wanted to place that. Let, let me, I, I'm sorry, Michael. I didn't know what you were referring to. There's a, in that. Complete it, streets. In the, right, I know it's complete streets, but what was the detail? There's percent um, what's the word? Uh, requirement. Requirement. You could have, you, we could require any new project to put 2% into a fund for doing pedestrian friendly projects. Is that, am I correct? In, that way. And what would that two percent go towards? Uh, sidewalks, I guess. There could be the river trail. I'm not sure what exactly where it could go. Building. Would, wouldn't zoning want sidewalks in most of these projects on the? Major no, they roads? could take it from projects at, at cul-de-sac. Could be forced to pay two percent to a fund. I mean, if I'm not correct, someone correct me. But that's how no, I read it. Correct. So if we chip seal a road, we'd have to put two percent of that budget towards the sidewalk or mm -hmm. stop somewhere else. Right. So I mean, I guess it just either needs to be clarified or, or something, or just look at this. That's why we're still talking about it. Yeah. So there you go. That's a good question. All right. Thanks, Michael. Just so the, the public is aware, and uh, Councilman Dolan and Nahum's first ordinance, uh, how an ordinance works is uh, after the public hearing, which was on the 26th, the council can either approve the ordinance as submitted, can amend the ordinance as submitted, turn it down, or if it takes no action by... Uh, April 12th, it dies a natural death, so to speak. 
Those are the council's options right, between you. now and the 12th. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Next person. All right. Uh, move action on the recommendation of the job description subcommittee to accept the updated job description for the tax assessor. And that is in your attachments. It's uh, page 9. Yes, uh, or page 22, depending on where you're looking. Item 9, page 22. And there's the old and then the new. Any discussion? Do I have a second? Oh, I, I, I don't think anyone did. Second. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Mayor, yes, sir. I'm going to abstain. I didn't have time to go through this. Okay. Greg, did you want to come up and talk a little bit about it? Yep, Paul. So, is the idea then that uh, under essential job functions we uh, keep updating that first bullet point every time our graduates changes, or make that more generic? It's very specific. Yeah, so I, I want to just thank you know, Katie and Lisa again. You've been doing really well with the job description subcommittee. Okay, but well we have a question, and I have a question as well, as sure. Paul just brought up. Yep, go Please, ahead, Paul. That's a, It was just the first thing under essential job functions when I was uh, mm -hmm. reading it the other day. It's just very specific, so is the idea when our grand list changes, we then update the job description, or? We can absolutely do that. If okay. we also, if we want to adjust that down and make it more generalized, and we could just do compiles a brand list and the valuation of taxable property. That's what I thought we were going to do was to have over 13,600 parcels with a valuation of taxable property over $3 billion. And these other ones are sort of specific for things. Okay. So but we can eliminate that. Doesn't matter. I mean, I'm okay with it. Well, just want to you wouldn't want to have to update it every time things change. But, um, I also have a question, Greg, that um, I guess I didn't pay close enough attention to this if this is how it was, but on the uh, working conditions, you know, the, the new thing you have where we X off occasionally, frequently, constantly. I'm curious as to why frequent exposure to chemicals and bodily fluids is in the assessor's job description. The only reason why that it would be frequent would only be through the town cleaning as to what's going on. So when you actually have uh, Does every office Cindy, person have that in their job? Um, working conditions? I, I've put it into frequent, not not to the point of a constant, but to the frequent because we do have Cindy coming in at least once or twice. Everybody that works here? Yeah, just as an exposure because when she's cleaning the windows, when she's wiping down the desks, there are I just think the bodily items. fluid kind of gets me. Maybe we could go into the chemicals, but I don't know. <laughs> okay, and the other question I had was under sitting, um, you have occasionally. Uh, and if the standing and the walking, I think the sitting should be con constant or consistent. Uh, constant is what it stands for. Um, not that I think that you know the person's going to while away the hours, but I, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it's occasional, right? Or frequent, perhaps. I think the change. To uh, that it, I mean, it's more of an allowable than anything else, isn't it? Yeah, I, would, and, I think the change to frequently would be appropriate. And what does handling refer to? Handling, handling. Whatever's in your job, documents, shovels. So handling can be papers, it can be shovels, it could be large boxes. It uh, whatever your job entails then. Okay, just checking. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? And the reason for putting it on uh, tonight is as we heard during budget deliberations, Kathy is going to be retiring at the end of the year. So knowing that this position is a difficult one to fill, um, we're trying to get it out uh, to all of the um, places where we post this job, and we're just trying to get it out now as soon as possible. As soon as possible. This will be a very difficult position to fill. It's going to take some time. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, move to request transfer of funds $10,000 from Assessor Legal Account 104-13900-53108 slash to Tax Rebates and Refunds 
10413-700-59500. The transfer is to cover refunds and rebates through June 30th, 2018. The assessor legal account has a balance of $15,125. There are no new appeals that would affect this fiscal year. And final invoices to Kramer and Anderson for previous appeals have been paid. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Um, Jim Furlow isn't here, but you want to move this anyway? He will be here. Right. We'll be here a little well, bit later. If, it's, I, I don't know. If Right. Uh, I'd like to move, um, well, first of all, let me lead in. The Inland Wetlands Commission has encumbered all $8,000 of the significant activity fee account for ongoing projects. More than half of the monies expended have been reimbursed to the town. So I'd like to move that the Inland Wetland Commission request for an increase of the additional $4,000 and additional $4,000 be added to both the expenditure account, 104, 1577 slash 53403 and the revenue account 104 15700 slash 44110 to bring the total of $12,000 to bring it up to $12,000 to cover the use of an outside consultant for additional projects. This is a self sustaining account. Any discussion? Katie, can, I don't want to be picky, but could you just go back to the first number you read on the expenditure account? First I mean, number on expenditure expenditures record, is 104 Thank you, that's all I need. I just heard it. I'm sorry. Do we, so basically we, you're if the one. Right, so he's adding some revenues that he's going to be getting, and then he's just upping his expenditures to cover the additional revenue. Yeah, I asked Greg Oss about today. Just when they hire an outside consultant by state statute, the, the town has to be reimbursed. So it's just Jim's hired outside consultants more this year. So it's revenue neutral. So the any person who's a project has to pay, pay for it. Yeah. Yep. Any other discussion? Do we have a second? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. <laughs> I move the Parks and Recreation Commission uh, we have, uh, the request. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> oh, Thanks, Jim. Jim. Why, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> That's us. He was outside the ball. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was perfect. Right? <laughs> uh, move to accept the Parks and Recreation Commission request. Uh, to accept a donation of $612 from the Candlewood Lake Authority for the purchase of an outer park bench which will be installed at Lynn Deming. The donation is to be placed in the park gift fund. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Thank you. Uh, move that the Parks and Rec uh, accept, uh, we accept the request from the New Milford Rotary Club for a donation of $1,900 for the purchase of a park bench and concrete pad to be installed at the Young's Field Riverwalk. This donation is to be placed in the park gift fund. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, item 13, discussion and um, moving this and we can discuss. Regarding a resolution appropriating six million dollars, I have it. Six million dollars for the planning, acquisition, and construction of road. I have it. Oh, you got it. Yes, I do. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's exactly the same. Uh, moving, appropriating six million dollars for the planning, acquisition, and construction of road improvements, 2018 to 2019, and authorizing the issue of a six million dollar bond to the town to meet said appropriation and pending the issuance thereof, the making of a temporary borrowings of a, of temporary borrowings for such purpose. Second. I will introduce this resolution so you can all hear it one more time. This is exactly how it has to be read. It's resolved that the resolution entitled Resolution Appropriating $6 million for the Planning, Acquisition, and Construction of Road Improvements, 2018-2019, and authorizing the issue of $6 million bonds of the town to meet said appropriation, and pending the issuance thereof, the making of temporary borrowings for such purpose. 
You still need to vote before I fin continue. Say again? You have to vote on it. No, you have to waive the resolution. You have a resolution I can't say it's hereby adopted and recommend. Oh, it's hereby adopted and recommended for approval. Waive the reading of the resolution first, and then you can adopt the resolution. Well, that ain't what I have here. Okay. <laughs> Is there a motion and a second to waive the reading of the entitled resolution so to incorporate the full text okay. into the meetings of this me minutes of this any, meeting? Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, Katie, you're moving the resolution. That motion passes. There are no oppositions, correct? Yep. Correct. Okay. Is there a mo there has been a motion? Is there a second to adopt the resolution? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Dr. Moore. Yeah. Let me just clarify. This is just to adopt the resolution. Mm -hmm. Correct. Thank you. All those, oh, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Would you like to have a roll call vote? As it was is. unanimous, right? It was unanimous. Oh. No, I'm, I'm okay. it's unanimous for me. Okay. I'm not requesting a roll call. Okay, no. okay. good. All right, then the motion passes unanimous. and the resolution is adopted. Okay. okay. Yeah, Next. Can I just ask a question on this? Uh, when is it determined the time that this bond will be paid off? Is it a five-year bond, 10-year bond? When will that be determined? Uh, I'll have uh, Mr. Osipoff come at the next meeting and tell us the terms of the uh, of the bond or the band and uh, move from there and Thank give you, you kind of the interest <clears throat> rate down as well. In, in the attachment mm -hmm. that's in your packet, there are. Uh, just, yeah. You know, if you. I tried reading this, Katie. I fell asleep. I know I did too, but um, <laughs> I read it twice, <laughs> so it is in here. In terms towards the back. The time frame was in here too. No. It it, uh, it references the it references I believe when it must happen, not before or not after. But as far as our town time, you'd have to speak as Pete said with the finance. But right. he'll come, right? Yep. Yeah, I didn't see a time frame for it. For it's not a years. it's not like it's a timeline. It's part of the language. Okay. That's, that's I didn't good. say that. Hmm. Actually, no time frame, interest. Why are we paying for year stuff? Like that? Oh, that's spelled out that needs to be done. Okay, Thank you. ready? Done? Uh, motion to create an arbitrary subcommittee consisting of six members for a duration of six months beginning March 12th, 2018, ending September 10th, 2018, to report back to the mayor and town council on the following. Promoting tree health and sustainability and the planting of the annual Arbor Day tree. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Uh, move the creation of the Youth Field Subcommittee, Fields Subcommittee, consisting of seven members for a duration of six months beginning March 12, 2018, ending September 10, 2018, to report back to the mayor and the town council on the following. Future needs for our youth fields. Second. Any discussion? Is oh, that just like question? Moment? Yeah. Did you? Is the, is, are these committees all three? Is, I guess. Um, do you have people in mind, or you want like, suggestions? Or suggestions. There are a few people that have already uh, wanted to be on this. I know, uh, as I spoke at the last council meeting, uh, Mr. Pilla, who was chairing the Youth Fields Subcommittee prior to, wanted to be back on that committee. But taking okay. names for the rest, whoever you is interested, that'd be you great. Right now, you want me to email yeah. you? Can you email? That'd be great. Dr. Mullen? Just on the time frame. Um, so we're not going to be naming the people to these committees for at least two weeks. Yes, no. sir. Then should we bump the date out two weeks? Okay. To the 26th and give them six months? Does it matter? It's the, uh, Dr. Mullen, the conventional wisdom would tell you yes, but the, uh, the it's from the date the council makes the resolution. Okay, thank you. Well, so it says future needs for youth fields. So is that all they're being charged for? It okay. should be. It should be instead of youth. It should be uh, future needs for, I would say, all fields. Yeah. Right? So they're going to reach out to all the youth organizations. Correct. And rights. 
yep. see what the needs are, and then as part of it, are they going to see what we're currently providing and what, what the disparity is between Correct. what we're providing and what we need? Okay. And this would be for adult. Uh, well, the future needs is all also. fields because all there fields. may be some fields that are are both youth and adult Adults. already. Yeah, so, softball, so, right. So okay. the we'll end would be motion. future needs for all Can I, fields. How about we say not? Well, you don't want cornfields in there. So <laughs> how, how about athletic slash recreational fields? Perfect. You think that's a Does that? Yeah, yeah I kind of wondered about the plan. Yep. Fields. Okay. Yep. Athletic recreational. So I, I make a motion to amend it, the last sentence to read, future needs for athletic and or recreational fields. I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And then we have to vote on the main motion, right? Do we have a second right time to second it? Uh, I seconded Dr. Mullins, but Walter seconded the first. Gotcha. Yeah, Do the first second on that. Any, any discussion on the main motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Move to create a nonprofit subcommittee consisting of three members for a duration of six months beginning March 12, 2018, ending September 10, 2018, to report back to the mayor and the town council on the following. Addressing the funding process for nonprofit requests. So we. Can I ask that you add in uh, the funding process for nonprofit profit requests to? Town council or budget, put some other word in there, yep. not just requests in general. I think that's too loose. To town council and the board of finance. An annual request? No, I'm not worried about what they're asking for. It's to whom? To town council and the board of finance? Yeah, I think so. Town council okay. and board of finance? Thanks. And this is to address what we spoke about at budget. Um, for some of the nonprofits, there wasn't a process in place for them to request funding. And in this request, this way, there's an actual process where we can tell them when they need to bring their funding in, what the what the proper procedure would be, what criteria, what criteria for the for the organization itself. And yeah, and this would be time. three. Um, if it could be three town council members, that'd be even better. Is that what you want, Doctor Mon? Here. Yep. Oh, this amendment. You mean make the, the three volunteers all be town council members? Correct. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I want that. I want something else. Okay. That's fine. Dr. Mullen? Uh, uh, this is my exact thought. Okay. Uh, I don't I think it, because they're reporting back to us and right. finance, I don't think anyone from town council or finance should be on this. Um, mm -hmm. I, 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 I haven't really thought about where the three would come from. But I just don't think, since I'm reporting back here, that it should be from this group or the finance group. I understand your thinking there. I also think that someone from the town council has to be involved to really fully explain, integrate the process as it exists and how it would or would not be facilitated or expedited or in any... I mean, I think there's too many areas of the budget that are not known. I, I agree with both of you. I think it needs to be five people, a council member, a finance member, and three people from the, from the community. That's my thought. At least four. That, that's a good idea. I, I, I that's fine. On the motion, motion to amend that? Original motion with that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, why are we supporting nonprofits? I, I really don't understand that. With, why is the town supporting nonprofits when they can go out and hustle and make their own money? What, are, what is the whole purpose? There's I, some, I, I just don't quite get that. I think, though, that you make exceptions for town nonprofits to do a function of town government, the cemetery, the children's center. Though. That's why we want to create this, so that if we're giving money to a nonprofit, there's a reason behind why we're giving it. And that, would, in my mind, would be one of them. There, you know, the, you know, we've gone through the reasons why those, top, those nonprofits actually get money from us, just like loaves and fishes. They're the ones manning the warming stations for us during the cold times. So they're helping the town out as opposed to otherwise we'd have to do something here with town employees. So it actually saves us money in the long run. So this is a streamlined process. To try and come up with a reason, not say, you know what, I like that nonprofit, let's give them money. And that's the point, is trying to put Exactly. It. Great. Thank you. No I believe there needs to be criteria set. Um, I, you know, it's wonderful to want to give money to everybody, but I have a problem in being involved 
and being a member of a lot of nonprofit organizations and not for profit organizations, and some who are really not considered not for profit, although they do great things in our community, I think that if it's going to become part of the money that is spent uh, or removed from a budget, whichever way you want to look. I mean, every time we say no to somebody or say yes to somebody, that's a no to somebody else. I think it's important for the taxpayers and for the organizations that it be a fair and equitable process. And uh, if we had that at least defined, then the, dis then the discussion of does it belong in our budgetary process, which I think is a very good question. But without a process to start with, it's hard to envision how it would really work other than what we've seen, which is somebody sends in a letter. So do, this is my have we opinion. already done the motion that it's going to be five people? <coughs> you had a motion, but nobody seconded it at the moment. <clears throat> but not with, this is with three, the way it was originally written on here. But nobody seconded, nobody no, seconded no the motion. first motion. Nope. So there was so no, motion. no motion. No one did? Right. No. Oh, I'm sorry. I make a motion to uh, adjust the nonprofit cell committee to five members, three members, from, um, two members, one from okay. the Board of Finance, one from the Town Council, and three members from outside those two groups. And that they'll report back to Board of Finance and yeah. Town Council. That yeah. has to be yeah. Yes. Yeah. Second. <laughs> Any second from Mike? Any yeah. discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Uh, move the appointment to the Town Facilities Utilization Subcommittee of Chris Cosgrove, term to be March 12th, 2018 through August 13th, 2018. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion Thank to you. adjourn, Mr. Mayor. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you.